seems to be at the moment. Whenever I get a break. Rain, rain, go away. Okay, so we have now got the uh, got the quad. Just gonna plug that in very quickly. Plug it in there. Um, we don't have any props on it, which is always good for the base. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes you're gonna see me. I've got props on. Sometimes you know I, I don't. But generally, as a rule, you don't want to have the props on on the bench because if it does spin up, it does something you know unexpected. You can have problems. So I'm just going to plug this in first, anyway. So I've uh, so I've got mine connected. I'll find my radio, just so we've got a receiver connected as well. Okay. So now I'm just going to take that out. I'm just going to connect onto this. And what you'll see now up on the screen there is COM port six. Is now available. We can connect through there. So there we go. And I'm just going to quickly go through the um, the settings on this. Now, when I upgraded, um, I used the CLI. And in the CLI, before you upgrade, uh, you can do this thing called diff all. D I double F all. Yeah, space all. It doesn't really matter if they're uppercase, lowercase. I don't think it's case sensitive. We're going to find out now anyway. So, um, all of that's in lowercase, so it doesn't matter. So yeah, we do a, diff, a default, and what comes up then is all of the settings I have, but I start from the top, all the settings I have which are different to the preset settings. Okay? So, I'm just going to pull down this slowly in case you want to look through it and pause it anywhere. And there we go, all done. Now, when we leave this, and I want to go into like setup or something, it will reboot, restart the system. That would have been great to be able to get out, get out and have a little flight, but unfortunately, um, the weather has not been with me. Whenever I've had any time to do that, the weather has been absolutely against me, and it's been really, really annoying. But Let's have a little look then. So the first page look you're going to get is this setup page. You get to see your quads. You get to move around. If I just move that to the front, and there's a reset uh, axis on this, and uh, there we go. So I can go left, go right, go forward, and go back, upside down, all this sort of stuff. Now the reason why it knows how to go left, right, upside down, the same as what's on there, is because of this. Um, this next little part here um, just a quick if you look down the side I'm not going to go for every single thing you get to see what's there okay so let's go into calibration and here is where we set up in order to get that um, you know when we when we go left it goes left when we when we dive forward it, you know it does what we want it to do it's in uh, well all reading from the same page as it were and this is all you've got to do. So basically you sit on the bench where it's nice and level and you uh, you just go through this calibration, okay? Um, and it will click up here to calibrate, the next one calibrate, the next one calibrate. And you just keep doing this until you've got it all there. There may be some fine tuning that you want to do, but you can do that outside of the craft. You can do that with your sticks. Um, and that, that's another video. Uh, and then you've got your mixer and you want to set up generally for this sort of thing multi-rotor quad x load and apply and then leave it right you can save and reboot if you want to i tend to do that quite a lot the outputs you're not really going to touch these anyway uh, you might enable the motors for servo outputs so you can switch them on and off um oh, i've got my esc's multi shot and the rest of it pretty much fills itself in i'm going to show you something here because I think it's worth showing is you do want your motors nicely calibrated like see that one little difference there okay so none of them are going and they all are 
and that's how you, that's how you want it really. And that we're all going in the right direction, of course. That's always a that's always a good thing. So you know when you calibrate it, all ESC is calibrated up together. But that's another video again. So in now in here, see, make sure you make sure the mixer is configured before you apply a preset, right? So I've not applied a preset on mine. I have not applied a preset. I've got a funny feeling it should go with something like this: six inch, twenty-two oh seven. 1700 kV motors because mine's a 6 inch quad, it's uh, running 2206, not really making a difference, and a 1720 kV motors. So that would be pretty much the ideal one. So I'm going to actually click on that because I've not done this yet. Oh, look, applies the following settings D shot 600, 2k, um, improved mechanics, optimized filtering, optimized rates. Problem there is D shot, um, yeah, D shot 600. Mine, I'm pretty sure, are set up to be multi shot. Now, I don't know whether this, whether this does that or not for me. I'm not going to say that I think it would do, um, so I'm just going to leave it for now. Ports are important. Now, you will get around to looking at that pretty soon. Um, generally, you know, you're going to use port 2 for your receive, and you're going to use S bus. You know, if you're using a fr FR style, something like that. I'm using uh, UART 3 for my serial receive and transmit on the data because it just uses the, um, the, the one port, the one UART, and um, uses the transmit the data on that, but a TBS crossfire. And then I'm using the smart audio for my, uh, my port 4. Okay, uh, configuration. Yeah, we've got some good, good goings on in here. I'm not going to go through the whole lot. But this is suggested for all multi rotors with propeller size below 8 inches, so they, they basically fill this in for you. I don't have a magnetometer, I don't have a barometer, I don't have any of these things here, so all this is set at none. It automatically finds your accelerometer. Um, I've left my roll degrees um, and everything just just the way it comes at the moment. I'm not going to play around with any of that sort of thing. Uh, band, flat shot, power level 2. Now, I'm not even sure if that's working on mine. Because uh, power level 2 on mine would actually be 200 milliwatts, but I don't want it coming on 200 milliwatts. I prefer it just to come on uh, at 25 milliwatts, so I can sit with it on the bench if I need to. On the right-hand side, you've got the voltage, uh, the battery voltage. Now, none of these you should really want to adjust or need to. I mean, you may find that you do have to. Um, and the same on the current, but look, just because it doesn't say, you can put a meter on if you'd like. And you can run from a power supply. You can put a meter on, and you could work out. Hey, right down the bottom end, it's it's di displaying too much current. Yeah, because your meter is telling you one thing, and its sensor is telling you another. And then as you start increasing the throttle, you may find they start marrying up a little bit closer, or even going out of line the other way. So. I, I would just leave it. I, I don't think it's supposed to be an exact precision thing. I think it's supposed to be a general uh, all rounder type thing on that. Uh, the other features here, this is interesting. So you can stop the motors on low throttle. Some say do this, some say don't do it. Um, this is going to be something that you've got the option to play around with. Uh, these options are great. It's just something you never, or at least I, I never was able to have with the Hobson. And it was one of the most frustrating things to always be flying in altitude hold uh, if you couldn't manage that center, self centering stick in, ma in manual because it's an absolute nightmare. As you'll find on any of the other radios that you might buy to do this, there's no self centering stick on the throttle. Anyway, so um, you've got your telemetry output, of course, we want that. Um, we want enable motor and servo output. Well, we don't certainly want the motors. Uh, CPU button by spy, no, got that. On screen display, yes, and um, profile selection with sticky mode, meh. I suppose I could start getting used to doing that. So, um, I think it's on the left stick, it's bottom left, and on the, on the right stick, then it'll just be left for profile one. Um, same thing, left stick, and then up, profile two. No, no, anyway, so. Yeah, so, so that's that's it. That's pretty much easy. You know, if you did have GPS and you're using new blocks, that's what I tend to use. Um, then you just turn the GPS on. 
your fail safe of course that's always important I've got mine down to land which is somewhere where I never like being the idea is you know if you do run into problems like you run out of radio it will just land somewhere which is all well and good if you know where it is um, so it's always nice to have the GPS to have the return to home facility as a last uh, as the last thing, but if you can just be flying, you know, close to you, and you've got yourself a, um, yeah, and your ESCs will chime after 10 minutes on this setup, 10 minutes, and also you can have your MOS, MOS model alarm, uh, wrong radio, which will beep your beeper, so as you get closer to where you think it is, you know, you can always, you always find it, so yeah, uh, not too bad. Now the pitch tuning on this I haven't touched yet, and as you can see, there, there are some numbers here, which means even if you don't select one of these presets up here, even if you don't select that, it's still got, um, it's still got, um, it's got some numbers in there for your tuning, proportional, integral, integral and derivative, your PIDs. Um, that's a whole other video. <laughs> Right, let's have a look into this. So you're not going to use a lot of this, not unless you're using a fixed wing. Uh, you may want to control your speed rates as you come in, as you come down, navigation climb, uh, cruise speeds, navigation speeds, user control mode, uh, the hover throttle, so you can you know you can adjust your hover throttle. Now these are the sort of things you want to play around with a little bit because it's every build is slightly different. You've got to imagine that. A different battery would make this lighter. Uh, I've pretty much got, you know, um, every build is different so that not one glove is going to fit all or anything like that it's, it's going to be everything you're going to do is going to be based around and then you're going to just fine tune for yourself don't ever expect to get perfect pids or anything like that I don't know, from what I can tell I don't think there's any such thing I think you get as close as what you can within your own parameters you know of what you find acceptable what you're happy with if you don't find it acceptable you keep playing you keep playing keep playing just remember this though you adjust P <laughs> it's going to adjust the other two on you as well, slightly. and it's always going to be like that until you just get it honed in to where you're happy with it. Um, yeah, so you, here you can adjust your return to home settings, so you can say it's at least a certain altitude. Uh, you can have it so uh, it's a, the current altitude, extra, fixed, max, or at least. Um, I'm not sure, at least a linear descent. Oh, okay, so get it up to a, at least a certain altitude and then come in for a linear descent so it's just on its way down. Ooh, that will be nice, wouldn't it, as long as there's nothing in the way. So I tend to leave mine on like current, but as I haven't got a GPS on this, that's not going to work anyway. You can even tell it to come in tail first. Lots of stuff if you put the GPS on. And I've got a funny feeling I am going to change this around for the GPS, but I'd really prefer to have the three mil arms on because it compensates for the weight of the... Um, the GPS module because they you know they're coming quite heavy I'm not quite sure what this is but uh, they're not exactly light but that's where that would sit and then we go the GPS but that board in there doesn't work with the GPS um, yeah so you got all sorts of bits and pieces down here uh, landing speed vertical landing speeds all the right stuff is for apart from the position estimate I wouldn't play around with that that's all fixed right? Ah, uh, this multi road to braking mode. Oh, that's something I don't use. Okay, that's for you guys there. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about any of that. I wouldn't touch anything, because most of these things are pretty much set up just the way you want them. Programming, I don't touch any of that. don't really need it. got no idea what to do in this. Um, but never needed to use it. I'm sure there's plenty of, plenty of things to use it with uh, for. I've always been curious why channel 17 shows this up. It's not my RSSI, that's on channel 12 here. But it doesn't seem to affect anything. And, uh, let me just go and stop copying from moving around. Uh, I could probably do with turning that down because that looks like it's about too high. 10 10. Oh, there we go. Just underneath. You want to be 1000 to uh, 2000, 1500 central. A little bit of noise on the stick there, probably to to be taking that out. Uh, the modes now the modes are pretty self-sufficient, so you're going to arm it. Got channel five for arm. If we're using one, two, three, four channels for motors, one, two, three, and four, 
the next channel we're going to use will be channel 5 right so channel 5 we can use the arm uh, channel 6 we can choose between our flight modes we've got angle we've got horizon and the default when neither of these two are set to anything at the minute it's in horizon the default is then to go to acro mode mine when it's in acro mode with neither of these set then goes into air mode and then I can pull out of air mode into horizon when I come into land just to make the landings a lot simpler um, but have you know but to have the, the front of the pin still being used at low throttle in, in air mode is beneficial beneficial there's my beeper so I put that on uh, the next channel, channel 7, uh, to make sure that I get that uh, lost model alarm, if you like. And that's it, that's all I'm using. I've not even got any switches for the OSDs or anything like that. Oh, there we go. Okay. So our adjustments, again, nothing in there. Don't need to use it. I haven't even got around to looking at it. I'm sure at this minute in time, just for doing a bit of flying around, and making sure everything's okay, I don't really need that. We don't have a GPS on, so we're not going to need to do any of the GPS stuff. We're certainly not going to need to use mission control or anything like that. And do anything, you know, um, pity, but we can't do anything like that. And we've got the OS on screen display, and I'm sure a lot of you guys there, you know, you're going to love playing around with mission control anyway. Because you've got your map, you can just map it out and you can set your first where you want to go. And you know there's, there's lots of settings in here as well so if it's a waypoint um, and then you can determine the speed it goes from one place to the other uh, here I've got mine that's 1666 centimeters a second so that makes it like one and a half meters a second I'm not sure if that's going to be fast enough to be honest with you but uh, 75 meters high and doing this but this is all the sort of stuff you got to play around with I wouldn't just um, I, would, I wouldn't just put something in, chuck it, put it up in the air and tell it to go on its waypoint mission. I'd really study up on on your speeds and make sure you know that you're going to be going at least, I don't know, what do you want to go for, 40k, something like 45, 50k, to make sure you get that right amount of centimetres a second. Um, so right in the on-screen display we can decide what we want to turn on and turn off, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Uh, I could do with my, moving my, my system around a little bit, but I just can't bother playing around with it at the moment. If you want a quicker switch time between things, uh, video formats, if you know what you're going to be on, switch it to that. Uh, having it on auto, just um, it, it will take the, the system a little bit of time to figure out which is which, and I'm talking a fraction of a second, but if you just want it to go automatically to PAL, automatically NTC, I'd, I'd switch that over. So you've got a lot of stuff here for temperature. There's a lot of stuff that may not be actually um, what you can use with your flight controller at this moment in time. But it's, there's a lot of stuff there to play with, a lot of stuff to keep you amused and be playing around. Of course, you've got your LED strips as well, so you can put LEDs on your craft and then you can map them out here. You say you wanted four on the front, one, two, three, four, and you wanted them to bite. Well, that's simple enough. You just mark out the ones that you want. Tell it to be a colour, and then you can give it a nice white colour. Do the same on the back. There is, it's one of those things with this, it's easy to do once you've just got the little swing about to do it. Okay, it's easy to do once you've just had a little play around, a little bit of practice. Uh, you can really go over the board if you want to, and you can go for modes, orientation, arm state, battery, RSS, GPS, ring and you can have warnings and indicators and all sorts but I would just get used to maybe if you are going to do this just light the front up, light the back end up, enjoy it and then start with all this different orientation uh, but it's all there, it's all there, sensors, okay so this is what we've got on at the moment so the top one is our uh, gyroscope oh. now we got our accelerometer zoom, zoom. and we got our barometer which of course this doesn't have um, so it's not telling me anything on the barometer. All these things, it's tethered login, yeah, I don't use any of that. Black box, uh, we've got a, um, we can put an SD card in this for a black box, but to be honest with you, just really not needed right this minute in time. And back to the CLI. Well, that's it, that's the quick little run through INAV. 
just so you get a little bit of a look at what's what with some basic settings in. Not a great deal to change, honestly, there isn't. Even though all those settings I showed you in the CLI, uh, they're just what you get around to, you know. Um, not a great deal to change. So there's a very quick look into the iNav setup for this particular quad. And I've got a funny feeling I'm going to strip this anyway and put this other board on it. So we've got a little bit of a uh, little bit of um, GPS. And we'll have a little bit of fun with that, shall we? And do some waypoints and bits and pieces. But I'll be in the next video. All right, guys. If you got this far, that's great. Thank you very much. And I um, hope iNav doesn't look like it's such a big overwhelming thing. Because uh, it's not, and there's some great, fantastic help out there as well. Um, but it is, um, it is. If you want to use a GPS, if you want to do waypoints, if you want to do anything like that, this would be the one to get used to. iNav, get used to iNav, enjoy iNav, and um, and you know, um, just yeah, just in, just enjoy that that flying sensation. Right, catch you in the next one, guys. Take care, everybody. Uh, stay healthy, and um, see you soon.